Have you ever watched a dog with a bone? Once he gets a hold of it, he just won't let go. Nothing will deter him. I saw that firsthand with Jackson at New Orleans. When everyone and everything said he couldn't beat the British, he just wouldn't listen. Determination won that day, even when common sense said it couldn't. Ooh, uh, Twelve and a half cents, if you please. Captain. Captain. Captains, the plan is simple, and upon reaching our objective, the triumph will enshrine our names and that of our country for posterity. Captain Sims, we are indeed fortunate that you are able to join us today. It is indeed an honor to have a true war hero with us. Gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast to Captain John Cleve Sims, late of the 1st U.S. Infantry, hero of the Battle of Lundy's Lane, and the sortie at Fort Erie. Indeed, yeah. Joseph Bowens. No coward charges an artillery battery and then personally spikes the gun. Nor faints from the enemy, bayonet to bayonet. And for that trouble, receives the thrust of cold steel through his coat sleeve. Gentlemen, you do me great honor. However, every man in my regiment did his duty. None recoiled from the dangers. The laurels of victory belong on their shoulders. Here, 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 here. Captain Sims, thank you for your devotion and courage. No one can doubt your bravery. But this theory you have, that the earth is hollow? The earth is hollow, gentlemen, and I intend to prove it. No disrespect intended, Captain Sims, but your premise defies all logic known to man. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Hamlet. The evidence presented by Captain Sims at his recent lectures proven the point for me. Vincent, all he has proven is that people are willing to pay 12 and a half cents to listen to him. Captain Lindley, my views are certainly unconventional, especially for those with a limited capacity to listen and to learn. That the earth is hollow? Not only hollow, but comprised of five concentric spheres or concave lands. These antipodal lands are ripe for discovery. Antipodal? He means the opposite side. If you were to start to dig down into the earth, for example, you would eventually come out on the opposite side from where you started. I thought you just ended up in China. Philo, with statements like that, it's no wonder everyone in this tavern trembles at the searing logic of your intellect. Captain, that is an interesting theory. But I disagree. The earth is solid. It is not a proven fact. My dear Captain Lindley, all new ideas are met with scorn and opposition. Observe the men of your infantry company while attempting a new linear evolution. Our species has been on Earth 6,000 years, and what have we learned in all that time? The ancients believed that the sun rose from out of the sea and that the Earth was flat. Galileo went before the Inquisition because he dared to say that the Earth is not the center of the universe. He should have known better before making that claim. Indeed, everyone knows himself over there is. Touché, Philo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll play along. We'll assume you're correct. There are antipodal concave lands within the center of the Earth. How do you propose to get there? Through the holes that you will find at the northern and southern pole. How big is that hole, assuming you can find it in all that wilderness? You won't miss it. At the northern pole, 4,000 miles across. And at the southern pole, 6,000 miles. That's a big hole. And that hole goes completely through the earth. Within lies the concave lands of hollow earth. Using your theory then, one could travel from pole to pole. Or hole to hole. But never pole to hole. What did he put in the ardent today? Smells the same. 
case the same. I need 100 brave companions to accompany me to the North Pole. How do you propose to pay for this? 12 and a half cents a ticket will not do the trick. An initial request for spending and funding was made to Congress by my representative, Colonel Richard Mentor Johnson. The man who killed Tecumseh. You mean supposedly, my dear captain. Regardless, his recommendation will carry some weight. Sadly, it did not. The motion was tabled. Now I am appealing directly to President Adams, a well-known lover of the sciences. The corrupt bargain himself. The president understands that the French, the Russians, and the British are all equipping expeditions to the north to find a route to the Orient. Well, sir, I read that a British naval captain by the name of Parry claims to have already been there via the North Pole. That is false. He couldn't have. <laughs> Why not? Because he's British? No, because if he had entered the hole in the North Pole, he would have emerged in the hole from the South Pole. Now I know he's put something in the Ardent. Once Congress approves the funds, I shall set sail in the early spring. The sons of Columbia shall lead the way. Well, this is a fool's errand. When I was with the Red River Expedition up at Fort Snelling, the Indian agent there, Lawrence Tolliver, is well acquainted with your theories. He was one of my lieutenants at Fort Erie. One evening, he and I almost got arrested by Major Marlin, the field officer of the day, while we were discussing my theory. Well, that and being inattentive to your duties while on picket during said discussion. The good Major lapped it off, rode off, full of whiskey at the time. Aren't all field officers full of it? I got a question. How do you plan on seeing when you get down there? You gonna be lighting candles in the middle of the afternoon like they do in Ohio? The earth is 7,000 miles thick. You get into that hole, there's no heaven up above, there's no sun. According to your theory, where does the light come from? The light is refractive from the two openings at the poles. But if the earth is hollow within, what keeps these five concave lands separated? By an elastic and permeable vapor, one layer supports the atmosphere below. Gas that erupts from our fissures is proof of that. That's the most ingenious explanation of the sounds emanating from those beds upstairs. You say there are verdant lands. What do those verdant lands contain? Vast herds of fat buffalo. If the buffalo are large there, the men should be as well, Nespa. Well, my good Captain DeFour, using that logic, the women must be also. <laughs> Indeed, even the ancients spoke of them. The Scythian sisters, Amazons. Imagine being able to converse with them and look them in the eye while doing so. I hope you have a height requirement for your 100 brave companions if himself over there signs up for the trip, he's going to have to look him in the kneecaps. Very funny, Philo. Did you read that in a book? Yes, I did. And placed next to you, it was a big book. I bet I know the title of that book. So do I. You're cut off. <laughs> Captain Sims, do not let these small minds deter you from your course. I, for one, believe your theory. Your logic is sound, and your arguments are well-reasoned. My dear Captain, no one here would ever impugn your bravery or your integrity. But the hollow earth does not exist. Francis, it should be remembered how often Columbus was ridiculed, yet he succeeded. Stay your course, Captain John Cleve Sims. I just don't know what to make out of all of this. Common sense tells me it's bunkum and bosh. Captain Sims is on the verge of penury because of his theory. I don't know what he plans to gain by it all. But I also say, when a man is willing to forego personal gain in an attempt to attain what is perceived as unattainable, that speaks well of him. Captain Sims has bravery to spare. Who better to plant our stars and stripes on those concave lands? And that 
is my twelve and a half cents worth. To you, Captain Sims. <laughs>